cold weather. So the bottom line is this. Use your head. If you're going out in cold, windy weather, dress warmly. It makes sense whether or not you're going to get bronchitis or any other infection. I, want, I have to move on because I have to get everything in, but I promise that we would tell if you have a wet head, you washed your hair, you went out with it wet, does that make you sick? Well, I, it, it would make you uncomfortable anyway. Okay, but not sick. Good to know. Right. So, also, we have to ask about migraines. Um, many people have them. They can be so debilitating, and that's not all. It turns out that for men, there's an added risk. These painful headaches increase their risk of heart attack, mm. doctor? Yeah, that's not only for men. As a matter of fact, women who have migraine with an aura, that's the kind of migraine headache that's preceded by visual or other uh, sensations, and then they, they develop their migraine, are at increased risk for developing heart attacks. Now it turns out that men with migraine headaches, we don't know whether it's with or without aura uh, before the headache, are at a substantially increased risk for getting a heart attack. Now what do you do with that information? You're already doing all you can to prevent your migraine and it, I think if you have a migraine your doctor should know about it and these men should be very carefully screened for symptoms and early evidence of heart disease. All right, that's uh, really important. Let's get to some more viewer email. This comes from Edward Rappaport who would like to know if saw palmetto is good for an enlarged prostate. I gotta tell you, that's a very interesting question. You know, more than two million men in this country who have the symptoms of an enlarged prostate, having to get up frequently at night, take saw palmetto. Many of my patients do, and they tell me that it improves their symptoms. There are no side effects significantly. Uh, saw palmetto is set to work by uh, preventing the, uh, the change of uh, testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, another form. So I have always advised my patients to use saw palmetto if they have symptoms. But then I was shocked to read in a recent, uh, last year, New England Journal of Medicine in a large double-blind scientific study that apparently saw palmetto makes no difference to the symptoms or to anything else. Now, what does a doctor do with that information? In my own experience, my patients who take it feel better. Since there are no side effects, I tell them, look, if you have these symptoms, try the saw palmetto. If it helps you, stay with it. If not, there are other drugs that you can take, like Proscar and Avidart and Hytrin, that can uh, uh, ameliorate the symptoms. The thing about saw palmetto, unfortunately, according to the New England Journal of Medicine, doesn't work, is it also has no significant side effects. All right. All right. Mm. Cock that they might be dangerous if you break them. We wanted to ask the doctor about that because there's mercury inside. Yeah, actually, the amount of mercury in one of these light bulbs is, I think, five milligrams. Compare that to 500 milligrams in an old thermometer. Uh, but still, it does contain some mercury, and you have to be careful. Now, the recommendations for these bulbs are if you drop one and break it on the floor, don't pick it up or, or don't use a vacuum cleaner because that can apparently disseminate the mercury into the environment. You're supposed to put on rubber gloves, uh, put them into a sealed plastic bag, and then take them to a special disposal unit for these bulbs. Also, when you're finished, when these bulbs have burned out, you can't put them in the garbage. You've got to take them to your local uh, re uh, recycling center. But, you know, I, I, I can't comment on about the energy efficiency and so on. I leave that to the environmentalists. I understand by the year 2014, all the incandescent bulbs will, be, uh, will no longer be used. Um, some of these bulbs, their fluorescence, tend to flicker. And if you're vulnerable to migraine, it, uh, it can induce a migraine. It's also, they've also been reported to induce uh, epilepsy in some vulnerable uh, individuals. Also, the fluorescent light can hurt the skin of people with certain conditions like uh, lupus or eczema. So, um, all in all, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of these light bulbs, and for the vast majority of people, they're, they're safe, and they're effective, and they'll save electricity, 
and the amount of mercury is negligible, but there are a few among us who will not be able to tolerate them uh, as they did the incandescents. All right. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it really is, uh, especially since these are being used much wider now. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the other thing. thing is they say if you break one of these bulbs, uh, you should leave the room, open the windows, and, and stay away for 15 minutes. Wow. Okay. Right. That's, that's good advice. Let's go to another question, and the email is from Diana. She writes that, I am 52 years of age and have mitral valve prolapse, and she wants to know how often she should take an echocardiogram. Well, first of all, my, mitral valve prolapse is a, a, a de mild deformity, in most cases, of one of the valves in the heart. It's very common. It's more common among women. The vast majority of people with mitral valve prolapse have no symptoms. A few do get palpitations or other symptoms and the diagnosis is made when the doctor examines your heart he hears a click with his stethoscope as he listens to the heartbeat he hears a click he then orders an electrocardiogram he or she orders an electrocardiogram and the diagnosis is confirmed now I think if you're feeling perfectly well and have no symptoms you can have an echocardiogram every few years just to see what's going on if however you continue to have palpitations get short of breath uh, develop other cardiac symptoms you may need an echocardiogram more often but really only if you have symptoms no question about it a lot of men worry about prostate cancer it's the most commonly diagnosed cancer for men for women it's breast cancer and it turns out that men who carry a breast cancer gene as well might have a higher risk of prostate cancer, doctor? Yeah, it's a mutation of the gene. It's called BRCA1 and BRCA2, are mutations of a normal gene. And if a woman has these mutations, she is at significantly increased risk for uh, breast cancer. It's very important for women with a family history to know whether they have this gene. Now it turns out that men with in whom there is a family history among the women of uh, of this uh, of breast cancer should probably also be tested for this gene because if they are found to have the gene they are at increased risk themselves for prostate cancer pancreatic cancer and even breast cancer although the incidence of breast cancer in men regardless of whether they have the gene or not is very low uh, the presence of that gene in a man should alert him to being uh, screened more carefully for the prostate, the pancreas, and the breast. Hmm. Many of you sent in the same question last week, uh, talking about omega-3 capsules. People want to know, number one, how do you get the fish oil taste out of your <laughs> mouth? Because you, you really extol fish oil yeah, and I baby think, aspirin. I think the omega-3 uh, fish oil capsules are very important. They reduce the incidence of sudden uh, cardiac death. They lower cholesterol levels. They, they make your blood less vulnerable to clot. So if you're taking them and you find you get a fishy aftertaste, you have several alternatives. One is take them at the beginning of a meal, just before you're about to start your meal. And the other thing is uh, take them uh, before you go to bed at night. And finally, if those two uh, recommendations don't work, change the brand. Uh, there are some brands that are clearly less fishy tasting than others. This comes from uh, Dr. Lobel, who's a clinical psychologist in Katona, New York. It's a very good idea. He says, after your evening meal, when you're finished the main course, brush your teeth. That will help you reduce your craving for dessert and will make you less likely to snack during the night. So there are some toothpaste now, as a matter of fact, that to say they contain anti -ap or appetite suppressants, but you don't need just use any toothpaste. Brush your teeth af after the main course at night, and you'll find you eat less dessert and less likely to snack. You know, I tried that. I still, after dinner and brushing, mm -hmm. ate that chocolate it that works. you were oh, nice yeah, enough to buy me over yeah. the holidays, the whole bag. <laughs> no. Nice to see you, Thanks, Dr. Doctor. Rosenfeld. Thank you so much. Thank you.